Hiya! Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm just going to be putting my nails on, and I thought while I was doing this, save a bit of time, I'd do a quick update on how things are going with me. Just to give you a bit of information on things I've been up to recently, little changes and developments and stuff like that. So, popping the old nails on at the moment. So, first thing to say is I'm seemingly mostly recovered from the injury I had that kept me out of running for a couple of months. So, it's basically about two months between uh, runs. So, I had my last run in France, so I was on holiday, and then had some fairly significant issues. But now mostly recovered and Last week had my first 10k run again in two months. So I've been running out for about two weeks again. Getting back into the swing of things is really tough. Really, very difficult to get back into things again. Um, struggling a little bit with fitness, certainly. It's amazing what a difference two months off makes. I wouldn't have. This is my first sort of foray into regular exercise. So this is the first time I've had to deal with the whole question of how you cope once you are out of the swing of things. You're not able to continue as you normally would do. And you have to find your way back in again. So it's my first experience of going through this and it's been, yeah, it's been really difficult. But I'm, I'm coping kind of okay. I feel I'm sort of okay with things at the moment. So I'm just doing this. So I'm coping okay. It's not too bad. Um, that's been a bit of a, um, yeah, it's been a bit of an interesting one. But I'm, I'm getting back into the swing of things now. So yeah, uh, I'm enjoying that. Running's getting much better. Really sort of happy with that. Um, went out the other night to pick punters for B&O. A huge crowd there, it's fantastic. Met um, a number of people who I'd not spoken to before, uh, Amandine being one of them, and a couple of other people, people I'd never really spoken to much before, such as Sean and Samantha. And that was really great, and met up with some old friends as well, Kerry, and had a chat with Jenny, Amanda, Anna, with Jake and Naomi and various other people. Met some people I'd not spoken to for a very long time, which was great. Always fun to bump into people in this kind of way. And fabulous night. Great, 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 great night. Had good dance, really good chat, lots of people to talk to. That was super. So really happy about that. And quite happy with the way it was, um, uh, with the way this night panned out. And next night out is going to be for Halloween. So, okay, on the way. So next night out is Halloween. So for Halloween, I've got to uh, work on a costume. And I'm thinking of going as sort of a female, sexy version of The Undertaker. So that's my idea. I think I can patch together most of an outfit. I've got to work on the makeup. Um, that's going to be fun. But um, yeah, today I thought I'd have a look at one of the reasons I'm wearing my black wig is I want to wear a long black wig for um, uh, for that particular outfit. And I wanted to get more of an idea of how I should be doing my makeup slightly bolder. If you're wearing a black wig. Um, paler skin, I find, you know, tends to look better with a uh, black wig. At least it does with my complexion and with how I do my makeup. So I went for a slightly paler today, and the black wig a bit more bold on the lips or with a red colour. So we'll just see how it goes. That was the idea for today. So that's what's coming up for me in the next um, uh, next few weeks. Now, a couple of other things that have happened recently, which I'm just going to sort of talk about. Um, I'm not making, you know, a lot of money from, in fact, I haven't made a single penny from YouTube to date. 
so I don't make um, any money from doing YouTube videos. I have adverts on there and you know I'm, I'm sort of on the cusp of maybe being paid some money for the first time ever from being on YouTube which is okay. Now I'm not doing this for to make a living I have a proper job which I do so for me there's a um, there's an element of this that is just fun and it's nice that it's fun. Having said that however I'm quite one for statistics and I'm quite one for for knowing how things work and for being okay with the way things work and one of the problems I've certainly got with YouTube at the moment is its ridiculous system of flagging my videos as being in some way inappropriate for um, for advertisers and it's weird which videos it is it seems to be any video where I put a picture of a like a film so um, my review of The Expanse, which I use some stills from The Expanse in that review, that one has been flagged, I can't get that one unflagged. Um, my top 10 movies of all time, that got flagged. Anything I describe as being in any way kind of role play is pretty much always flagged. So it's one of those things where if I was trying to make money from doing this, I'd certainly have to be more careful about what content I put out. A lot of my Q&A type videos, talking about my experiences and answering questions, anything that gets near, um, let's say, difficult conversations or difficult topics, instantly gets flagged. Talking about coping with alcohol, that one's flagged. So these videos, because I don't get, you have to get like a thousand views inside seven days to get them reviewed. And I've been, you know, clicking them, submitting for review, even though they don't get that many views. Um, and sometimes they will be uh, remonetized, which is great. Then you'll come back a week later and they're back to being flagged again. It's ridiculous. So, like I said, I'm, I'm not trying to ask for anything on this. I, I do think it's a, it's a slightly weird thing at the moment. It is, if I wanted to make money from YouTube videos, it would be driving me towards specific types of content, which um, would restrict what I'm able to do. Now, I'm not really that happy about that. So I would prefer to be able to continue. It's one hand done. I prefer to be able to continue to do you know, the content that I want to do and talk about real issues, but talk about fun things that engage me. Um, and not have to worry about how much I'm losing in terms of revenue from views and all that kind of stuff. Um, so just by way of a bit of a moan, a bit of a gripe about what's going on at the moment, just thought I'd refer to that. Um, another thing that's really annoying me at the moment is, and this is going to affect I think what I do online, um, I've had a huge problem recently, uh, as I've been finding out, with people stealing my images and using them for weird purposes. Now, I've had various things happen with me in the past. So I've had people pretend to be me on Facebook. So I've had to get accounts shut down. I've had people pretend to be on me. I've had people pretend to be me on various websites, which is certainly irritating but it's quite easy to identify and shut it down you just send out some information now what i found recently is um my photos have been used in two different ways one of these was uh, a youtube video which included a photo of me in a video where you're invited to guess whether the person in the picture is either a man or a woman. Now, personally, I view myself as a transvestite, cross-dresser. I don't have gender dysphoria. I act and I try to be as feminine as I can when I'm dressed. So I am Juliet right now. But it all comes off. You know, I don't, I'm not full-time, I, I don't try and live my life in a full-time way, I'm not transgender. Um, transgender, you know, labels, um, I'm, I'm, I, I put myself in, let's say, a trans community, but 
I try not to label myself as transgender if I can avoid it because I don't feel that I am. Okay, all on. One second. Um, I also don't think it's fair. Go with this one. I don't think it's fair to people who are transgender that my particular viewpoints get subscribed to them, or vice versa. So, you know, it, it, like I said, it is a wide community, the trans community. There are lots of different people in it. There's room for all of us. But I'm aware that other people have very, very different problems. Very, very different things that are um, important to them. And to some people, what I do is sort of a pretend thing. It's not me. I don't live one life, I live two lives. One far more than the other. So you see my sort of, my hobby life, if you will. Anyway, so this video flagged me up as being male. Fine, I am, no problem. Except that they didn't ask my permission to use the photo. They didn't, they didn't ask my permission to use the photo. They didn't contact me at all to tell me they were doing this. Um, and had I been someone who identifies as transgender, um, and there were plenty of people on the video who may well identify that way. I know some of them. I would have found that quite hurtful. So had I been someone who identified as transgender, I think I would have potentially found it quite hurtful to have, um, firstly, a video pronounce me as male, because all of the pictures, just to be clear, were either of um, uh, people who are genetically born female, or they were someone in the trans community who may be cross-dressers, transvestites, transgender, whatever else. But that video was, yeah, I, I think it was unfair. It, it certainly made an assumption that it's okay to say that these people are male. And it's from, it's a channel that is associated with a website which professes to talk about the trans community and how the trans community is, you know, uh, understanding being a crossdresser. And it, it, you would think they would know better than to apply this kind of binary gender labeling to people. Um, and as you can tell, I guess, I hope from my demeanor, I'm not outraged by this. Um, I'm just sort of commenting on something that did happen and offering, I guess, a viewpoint on this. And in my view, it was, I would have preferred to be asked for permission Quite frankly, I may have given permission, um, but the image was taken anyway. And it's certainly leading me to reconsider what images I want to put online, um, what I would do that doesn't have enormous watermarks slapped all over it, and frankly, whether I would abandon images like that, which can be so easily taken and used and you know, putting images up on places like Flickr in favour of pure video, where it's much harder to reuse this content in any way or for any other purposes. Um, anyway, done. That was quick. So uh, that's what's been going on with me recently. A um, couple of good nights coming up soon. Um, bit of a moan about those particular images things. I'm gonna have to try and think of a way to deal with that. It may just be that I don't put as much stuff online. 
I may have to slap big watercolours and watermarks all over my uh, videos. Who knows? I'll have to find a way to deal with that. Anyway, um, thanks for joining me today. Lovely talking to you. And um, nice to do a little update again. Not done one of these for a while. And I'll get on to some other interesting topics in a minute. Okay, thanks so much and bye. Bye.